Wright and Mullins will be going on it tonight on uh, WPRG TV Sports, Telecom Cable Channel 5. Uh, tonight at Mullins High School, it is Parents' Night. They're celebrating Parents' Night and saluting the parents for their activities in support of the Mullins High School basketball team. And it's a great thing that they're doing and a great thing that they have done with this uh, program. And it should be an interesting game here tonight. I'm Ted Meadows. I'll be your play-by-play -play announcer for this evening, along with Bernus Hall and Dr. Don on camera. And the little tiger, John Taylor. As you're seeing pictures right now of uh, Parents' Night. The Mullins Tiger making his way out at this point. A big salute to the parents and the players of Mullins High School. Their support for the program and the appreciation of their children. It's a wonderful thing. Again, reminding you, you're in tune to WPRG TV Sports, Telecom Cable Channel 5. And we're coming to you from the Mullins High School this evening, where Mullins will be taking on the Will Wright Trojans. And that game will be getting underway shortly. I'm Ted Meadows, your play-by-play -play announcer. Right now, we're watching the uh, pregame ceremonies. It's night, Parents' Night here at Mullins, and they're saluting a uh, contribution and support of the parents to the athletics department here at Mullins High School. It's a fine thing. Once again, you're watching WPRG TV Sports, Telecom Cable Channel 5. Mullins High School tonight. We'll be seeing the Mullins Tigers take on the Will Wright Trojans in just a bit. It's Parents' Night here at Mullins. They're saluting the parents of the uh, Mullins basketball team for their support of the team during this season. He's been a member of the basketball team for two years and is represented tonight by his father. Scott Hamilton. Scott is the 15 year old son of Dale and Gail Hamilton. He's been a member of the basketball team for two years. Scott is being represented tonight by his mother. Shane West. Shane is the 16 year old son of Carter and Becky Hall. He's 
been a member of the basketball team for two years. Shane is being represented tonight by his parents. Bud Burnett. Bud is a 14 year old son of Dwight Chad Burnett. He's been a member of the Titans basketball team for one year. Bud is being represented tonight by his mother. Scotty Burnett. Scotty is a 15 year old son of Ricky Burnett. He's been a member of the basketball team for one year. Scotty is being represented tonight by his father. Matt Carter. Again, you're watching WPRG TV Sports Telecom Cable Channel 5. Parents night at Mullins High School. The game tonight, Mullins and Wilwright. In just a couple of minutes, we'll be speaking with Monroe Jones, the coach of the Wilwright Trojans. As they continue to salute the parents of the players here at Mullins. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the 1990-91 Mullins Tigers cheerleaders and their parents. Let's have a big hand, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's WPRG TV Sports, Telecom Cable Channel 5. I'm Ted Meadows with you tonight. And tonight's game between the Mullins Tigers and the Wilwright Trojans. Speaking right now with Monroe Jones, coach of the Wilwright Trojans. Coach, you've uh, sort of had a little bit of a rough season thus far, but how's the team coming along at this stage of the game? Uh, basically, we have had a rough season. We've played a lot of teams close. Uh, of course, McDowell, Betsy Lane, and quite a few teams you guys have already covered. Uh, our team's looking to improve quite a bit here. They, they went out and beat uh, Allen Central other night conventionally at home, and hopefully we'll get us one on the road if we play uh, play a lot of defense. What do you know about the Mullins team? Who are you going to have to shut down on this team to uh, come away with a victory tonight? Uh, Mullins, uh, they're, they're an aggressive ball team. Uh, you look at uh, McPeak, of course, is an outstanding guard. Uh, he looks to penetrate a lot. Uh, you got low and uh, inside you've got Scarlett, of course. You got to keep him off the board. So uh, we're looking for an exciting game here tonight. And uh, you got a gentleman on your team by the name of Harold Johnson. Now they say here that uh, on your stats that he's averaging 26 a game. But in one of the games that uh, I've covered, uh, he scored up in the neighborhood of 30 some odd points the other night. I believe he had 35 against Allen Central. Uh, who are they going to put against him tonight? Who are they going to try to get to shut him down? Well, I'm sure uh, their coach is trying to uh, Get one of those guys to shut him down, maybe front him, maybe double team him. We're looking, uh, but we, you know, we're a team effort. We had our uh, McCoy boy got 21 against us the other night, and we've got a couple good guards that'll that'll fill in the place. But uh, Harold's a fine ball player. He's here in the last 10 games, he's averaged around 30, 32 points a game. So we can't, ha you know, we can't ask very much from him. You know, he's a tough player. Uh, he's his shooting percentage is pretty good too. Uh, he he doesn't miss that many shots, and we're r well pleased with it. Excellent, Coach. What's your current record at this stage? Uh, we're seven and twelve right now. Seven and twelve, and where do you go from here? Well, we've got uh, Sheldon Clark. We play tomorrow night at home, which will uh, be a tough game for us. They're a pretty good team. And uh, next week we've got three conference games. We got uh, Preston Bird uh, on a Tuesday and a Saturday, and we've got uh, McDowell on a Friday. Okay. Good luck in tonight's game, Coach. We appreciate you stopping okay. by and talking to us. Appreciate it. And we'll be back in about one minute on WPRG Telecom Cable Channel Five. A satellite signal comes from outer space. The satellite office across the country and their call center? Hmm, we'd better not even go there. So if you want to do business in your hometown with people you know and trust, call cable. Gearheart Broadband is locally owned and operated. Our number one concern is giving you, your neighbors, and your community friendly local customer support. Get everything you want. Go local. Go Gearheart Broadband. Channel 5, Ted Meadows with your play-by-play -play tonight. Mullins and Wilwright. I'm speaking with the coach right now, the Mullins Tigers, Joe uh, Marson. And Joe, uh, how's your team coming along so far this year? Oh, uh, you know, if you had to sum it up, I'd say we've, you know, we've had our ups and downs, but uh, 
we think we've made a lot of progress and uh, fundamental play is a lot better than it was early in the year and uh, we've cut our t uh, turnovers we had a real experienced team and we knew it was going to be a learning process and we feel like they've done that they've learned and progressed uh, fairly well throughout the season with a few minor setbacks and what's your current record uh, currently we're two and fourteen two and fourteen but still you know you got your teams in the area in the region like your Prestonsburg and Mullins uh, their records aren't that great but that is not necessarily indicative of how well their basketball teams play you got a few fine players uh, Jamie uh, McPeak is a very good player Chuck uh -huh. Lowe uh, another good player and several other good players. How, how deep can you go on your bench? Um, for the first part of the year, we wasn't real deep. We had some people that was, you know, still in the learning process. Uh, probably since Christmas, we've been going a little deeper, probably about eight. And tonight, we're even going to try to go a little deeper than that. We'll try to go nine or ten deep tonight from this point on in. And how do you plan on playing the Trojans tonight? Are you going to press? Uh, yeah, we'll probably get after them all over the floor and try to create a little bit of up-tempo and uh, generate some offense out of our press defense. Excellent. Now they have a player. He is their big gun. His name is Harold Johnson, number 31. I'm sure you know about this gentleman. Yeah. Who's got that assignment tonight? Um, actually, we give that assignment to five men. We got one man guarding him, and we want the other four to help. Him. When it goes inside, we're going to try to swarm him and get it back out on the floor. He's a tremendous player. We played him once this year, and he uh, does a lot of things. He plays with his back to the basket and facing the basket, and. Uh, plays he step out there and hit that three pointer on you so we're going to you know we're going to really concentrate on him and then they've got some you know they've got some other fine players in uh, Paul Hall and uh, uh, I forget the boy's name he's uh, been coming on for me he's uh, what is his name Bailey Bailey's been Bailey, playing yeah. pretty well for him Lane Bailey I don't want to leave anybody out there they'll get about 30 on them. yeah definitely <laughs> well, let's step outside the game tonight coach uh, the, during the uh, before the teams came out to warm up tonight, you were having what uh, you call parents' night. Parents tell us a little bit about that. Okay, that's an annual thing we have here, and uh, we uh, have our cheerleaders and our uh, varsity squad, junior varsity freshmen. Everybody's in our program. We like to recognize them and recognize their parents because there, uh, you know, a lot of commitments made when you when your son plays a sport to get him back and forth to practice and encourage him and this and that. And uh, we uh, have a lot of support, and our parents support our players, and we really like to do that once a year. That's a fine thing you're doing. Coach, good luck tonight in the game. Okay, and thank you. And hopefully we'll be able to talk to you afterwards as well. Okay. We'll be back in just a moment on WPRG, Telecom Cable Channel 5. Gearheart Broadband knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey. One to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact Gearheart Broadband and connect to the internet speed that suits your journey. And enjoy the ride. Telecom Cable Channel 5, Tim Meadows with you this evening at the Mullins High School Gymnasium where we have Mullins and Will Wright on tap for this evening. Before we get to the game, which is just a couple minutes away, I'd like to speak with Don Bowling. Now, Don, you're an instructor, I understand, here at Mullins. Dad, I'm assistant principal with the school system here at the uh, at the high school. We're um, our junior high department has uh, tried to vitalize itself this year. We've had several uh, activities, and tomorrow we're our junior high science department and math department are sponsoring a an egg drop in which our students have been working on. Uh, being able to package a raw egg in the shell and drop it from a second story window and and uh, not have the the shell be broken. Uh, we've uh, invited WPRG to, to come up and film the uh, activity and they have graciously indicated that they would uh, try to be here. Our, our students are very, very excited about it and they've come up with some very innovative ideas uh, uh, to protect that uh, that egg. So we, theoretically, then, what they're going to be doing, they're trying to uh, build a contraption, I would I would guess, that would uh, have that egg land safely without breaking on the ground or, in essence, hurting someone when it actually fell, I guess. This is correct. They, they uh, have to package the egg inside a uh, cardboard carton no larger than 10 inch by 10 inch, and uh, they can uh, wrap the egg any way they want to. The only thing they cannot do is boil the egg or have it cooked before they put it in the uh, the cardboard cart. We have uh, 
uh, physics instructors from Pikeville College that will be uh, judging the entries and also uh, an engineer with, uh, with private industry and some of our physics students uh, from the high school here. And we have uh, a local company, Porky's Pizza, that have uh, agreed to donate uh, first, second, and third place uh, prizes in the form of large pizzas to the, to the winning entrance. Sounds like a real deal to me. We're really excited about it and uh, looking forward to, to, to the event and to having you folks with us tomorrow. Well, it should be a good time. I hope we can make it up there and good luck in this venture. Thank and you, uh, I think what you're doing here at the school is really fine, getting math and science together and actually uh, putting it to use and letting the students to really have a good time with it. They're enjoying it, looking forward to it. Thank you for Great. Being here. Thank you, Don. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes on WPRG TV. More than ever, we're all living online right now. It's one more reason using online account management from Gearheart Communications just makes sense. Visit ecare.gearheart.com to sign up so you can pay your bill, review your statements, or set up worry-free automatic payments, all without leaving your home. Make life a little easier. Online account management from Gearheart Broadband. Sign up today at ecare.gearheart.com. Five, we're live at the Mullins High School Gymnasium tonight. Mullins, the Tigers taking on the Trojans of Wheelwright. Should be a very fine contest, and we're glad you could join us. What you're seeing on your screen right now, the Mullins cheerleaders. No, I'm sorry, those are the Wheelwright cheerleaders. And uh, they're out entertaining the crowd right now across the court. You could probably see the uh, mascot of the Mullins High School team, the Tiger himself. Looks like the, uh, the uh, Tiger bred Tiger out there, Don. Yeah, it sure does, doesn't it? Uh I'll tell you what, we just uh, captured the Wheelwright uh, Trojan cheerleaders. Let's uh, catch these uh, roaring Tigers that here from Mullins High School. sounds like a winner. Everybody can use a good cheer or two or a whole squad. At least. <laughs> <laughs> I'd settle for one good chuckle, Don. <laughs> I'm pretty easy in that respect. <laughs> easy to please. There goes Ed Taylor. We'll be talking to Ed at, uh, in just a few minutes. Fine routine by the Mullins High School cheerleaders. Fine looking bunch of girls as well as the Wheelwright uh, ladies as well. And uh, looks like we may have some uh, refreshments coming up here, doesn't uh, it tell you? Looks like it to me. It's uh, it's not necessarily Miller time, Don, but we'll, we'll call it Pepsi time. <laughs> and uh, we'll take a time out here for a quick drink. And we're gonna be back. Uh, game time just a couple minutes away. Stay with us right here on WPRG TV cable, telecom cable, channel five. There we go, I'll spit it out, Don. Good evening. Back to the Mullins High School Gymnasium, WPRG TV Sports Telecom Cable Channel 5. Tonight's game, the Mullins High School Tigers taking on Wheelwright. And we're about ready for tip off. I'm along with Bernus Hall of WPRG fame, and he'll be doing some color and stats for us this evening. We'll be joined a little bit later by Ed Taylor of the Floyd County Times, and we are ready for tip off of the first quick period of this game between Wheelwright and Mullins. Should be an interesting game. Furnace, you got two fine teams. Neither team has a uh, fantastic record, but uh, as uh, we've seen all season long in uh, district and regional play, the teams with the uh, least likely uh, you know, stats as far as records go, they can come in and they can give you a whale of a ball game. Uh, we've seen it in Prestonsburg. We've seen it out of, uh, we've seen it out of uh, Will Wright the other night against Allen Central. Uh, they did a fine job and uh, came away with a win over the Rebels the other night as we are getting ready for the starting lineups of tonight's game. Prior to that, we will have the playing of the national anthem. We'll pause. Of course, that wasn't the national anthem. That was a uh, pregame prayer, and we do appreciate that. Uh, praying for the uh, soldiers in the Persian Gulf. And of course, our support is, of course, with those gentlemen, and we wish them the best, and uh, hope they come home very soon. Now our starting lineups, first for Wheelwright. Starting, it'll be double zero, Shane McCoy. Number 31, 
Number 35, Steve Johnson. Harold Johnson, Steve Johnson also getting a start tonight. Number 35. Number 15. Jimmy number 15, Helton. it'll be Jimmy Helton for the start for the Trojans this evening. And number four, and number four tonight, it'll be Steve Shelton. We'll get a start tonight for the Mullins High School Tigers. Starting lineups, we're getting ready for tip off. Number 22. Number 13, Chuck Lowe. Be Jamie McCheek, Peak, Chuck Lowe. Number 22, Corey Scarlett. Scarlett, Coy Scarlett, he is a 6'1 uh, junior. And that was Brad Gibson. And Shane West Number getting a start tonight for the Tigers of Mullins. And now we're about ready for tip-off. I think I called tip-off a little bit early just a few minutes ago, but I believe we are ready for that right now as both teams are making their way to center court. Should be a hot contest tonight. And we welcome you to WPRG Sports Telecom Cable Channel 5. I'm here with Bernice Hall on color and stats and also Dr. Don. A little bit later, we're gonna be joined by Fred, or rather Ed Taylor of the Floyd County Times. And well, we just had Ed over there with the uh, Tiger mascot there, Ted. Yeah, he's taking pictures, I believe. Jumping center is number 23, Coy Scarlett. And he's jumping against no, double, double zero, Shane McCoy. And the Tigers have possession of the ball, number 15. Shane West with the ball. Over to number 22, McPeak. West inside, back outside to number 14, Chuck Lowe. Over to number 22, that's Jamie McPeak. Tries to drive the baseline, and he's gonna get a charging foul, so it'll be a foul on number 15 for the Tigers. Shane West, and that'll be his first, the team's first. Will Wright will take it out of bounds, got backcourt pressure by the Tigers. And that gentleman you wanna watch tonight has had the ball just a second ago. Number 31, Harold Johnson, a tough player. He's a big gun for Monroe Jones, Will Ride Trojans. Number 35 with the ball, that is, as we get a walking call, that's gonna be against Jimmy Hilton. Number 35, of course, is Steve Johnson as the Tigers take it out of backcourt. Uh, minimal pressure being applied by the Trojans. They pick it up man to man on half court. Three-pointer, no good by number 22. Jamie McPeak tried that. The ball went out of bounds off the big hop. And let's see who gets possession. We're gonna give it back to the Tigers. Tigers inbounding it, and he threw it away, but it's been picked up. And another deflection. That deflection made possible by the good defense of number 35, Steve Johnson for the Trojans. Tigers will take it out again. Side court. And along the baseline and is stripped by number 15, Jimmy Hilton, but he stepped on the out of bounds line. It'll go back to the Tigers. Good defense right now by the Trojans. Really shutting down the baseline to the Tigers. Two point shot missed by number 22, Jamie McPeak. And the Trojans get the rebound, they'll bring it down court. Nice defense by the Tigers. Little jump shot, and by who else? Harold Johnson, he draws first blood. Two nothing in this uh, game, the Tigers and the Trojans. Trojans on top, 6.41 remaining in the period. Nice drive to the basket along the baseline, number 15, Shane West for the deuce. A Little more pressure now by the Tigers in backcourt, token pressure. And we have uh, carrying. He was carrying the ball, so they're gonna turn it over to go back to Mullins. Now get a chance to go ahead here. Score tied, 2-2, 6.30 remaining in the period. Shane West with the ball. Goes down inside and uh, is picked off by double zero. Shane McCoy for Wilwright, and the Tigers turn it over once again. That's Johnson, he tries to drive and had the ball stripped. The Tigers on the run. That was a nice dish, but they're gonna call, the, call a walk before the shot, so the shot was no good at any rate, and uh, the uh, Trojans are gonna get the ball back. I believe that walk was charged against number 15. For uh, the Tigers, Shane West. Pressure in backcourt by the Tigers, as we have a new entry into the game, and that is number 20. 
Lane Bailey. Bailey on the baseline, takes a jumper, no good. Rebounded by number 23, Coy Scarlett for the Tigers. All tied up at 2-2. Nice little jumper by number 22, Jamie McPeak, but no, no dice on that one. Down under, Johnson went up. Let's see if they're gonna give it to him. He gets a foul, let's see who it's gonna be on. They're gonna count the two points, and it's gonna be on number 34, or rather 43, I'm sorry, 43, for Mullins, and that's Brad Gibson, so he draws his first foul. And that'll send the big gun, Harold Johnson, to the line to shoot a cut, or actually to shoot one. They did give him the deuce, so the score is now four to two. Will Wright on top, 525 remaining in the game, and he converts on the one point, three point play. Two on two in backcourt, jump shot, air ball. Out of bounds, it'll belong to the Trojans. Offensively, uh, Tigers just having a little bit of trouble. You saw the air ball just now by uh, Jamie McPeak, and he is a fine player, shoots a good percentage, and uh, he just did, didn't have enough strength behind that particular shot. As the Trojans take it out in backcourt. Steve Johnson with the ball, he drives down the baseline over to the corner to Johnson. Harold Johnson had it knocked away and stolen away by the Tigers. Way down court. Pass just a little bit too high, and once again, they turned it over. That pass was made by Shane West, but it was too high, and uh, number 23 for, for the Tigers, they just couldn't handle it. Coy uh, Scarlett couldn't handle the ball a little too high for it. Run out at the other end by the Trojans. Nice little jump shot by Steve Shelton, and they go up seven to two. Trojans on top. And we're gonna go a blocking call against Shane McCoy for Wilwright. As Coy Scarlett was driving down the middle in the paint, trying to go for the uh, easy layup, but uh, Shane got him with the body. They're gonna call a foul on Shane McCoy. I believe that's Shane's first foul. And the Tigers have it out of bounds. They need to convert on a couple of possessions to get back in this game. Could be on the verge of a blowout here early on. Nice defense by the Trojans. Three-point shot, up and good. Beautiful three-pointer by Chuck Lowe for the Tigers. Five to seven, Trojans on top. Pressure applied by the Tigers. Down low, Johnson rejected. Nice clean rejection. They said they were gonna play him tough tonight. He's the big gun and that's the guy you wanna shut down if you're gonna beat the Trojans. Outside shot, no good by number 35. Tigers have it. Nice dish to the inside, but we got a walking call. Boy Scarlett, he had a nice pass to him. He was going for the basket, took a couple of steps, and just couldn't get it. He made the walk. Trojans have the ball again, being brought down by Lane Bailey. Bailey across the timeline, drives to the paint, tries to dish off, couldn't, I thought he walked, but they say no dice. And Johnson went up for the basket. What was the call? I believe they did call a walking. Walking violation on the Trojans, so it'll be Tiger Ball. Inbounds play, intercepted. Actually thrown away and then intercepted. Basket good by Steve Shelton. Four points for Steve Shelton. Fine ball player for Monroe Jones. These Trojans are feisty. They're, they're, they're a tough team to play, but then again, so are these Tigers. Could go down the wire. Nice little off-balance jumper by number 23. That's Coy Scarlett hitting the deuce. We're now at 9-7. 3-19 remaining in the first period of play. Action down low, and we got a foul. That's going to be on number 43 for the Tigers, and that's Brad Gibson. I believe that's Brad's first foul. How many fouls does the team have at this point? Two or three? Uh, they got three. That's two on Gibson. Okay, two on Gibson, three on the team, and the Trojans take it out of bounds. Inside to Steve Johnson, or I'm sorry, Harold Johnson. He goes up, gets the basket. They wave it off. He took steps before he put it up, and the Tigers get another berth with the ball after that big turnover a while ago. Shane West brings it across, looking for an open man, dishes down inside. 
Nice deuce by number 43, Brad Gibson, inside the paint. Lane Bailey brings it across the timeline for the Trojans. We're all tied up, nine all, 2.48 remaining in the first period. Three-pointer by Bailey, no good. And we've got probably a pushing foul underneath. We're gonna see who they call it on. I'm not sure who they called that on. But at any rate, I believe we're gonna have a timeout. It's gonna be on Trojan's side, so we'll be back in one minute on WPRG TV5 Telecom Cable Network. Gearheart Broadband knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact Gearheart Broadband and connect to the internet speed that suits your journey and enjoy the ride. With families spending more time at home together this year, it's a great time to level up your internet for the speed and Wi-Fi you need to power game consoles and computers at peak performance. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to upgrade. I'm sure, Ted, when you said which one of these is mine, you were talking about our Pepsis there yes, that, uh, yes. that the uh, ball of <laughs> so gracious they gave <laughs> They us were so nice to uh, furnish us with a Pepsi tonight, and I got a little confused no. as to which one was mine. I didn't know if I was drinking Bernice's or yours, Doc. I uh, was totally so, unsure. Right, some good uh, cheerleading there from the uh, Wheelwright Trojan cheerleading squad. Nice looking bunch of young ladies, fine. Mm -hmm. And we're inside with the Trojans now. That's Harold Johnson going up for the easy deuce. And the Trojans go back on top, 11-9. As we continue with the first period of play here at the Mullins High School Gymnasium. WPRG TV Channel 5. Three-pointer up by number 22. And that was McPeak, and it was no good. Run out the other end of the court, double zero up. And it's good. Shane McCoy with an easy deuce. 13-9 Trojans on top. Very good defense and excellent, uh, excellent defense, in fact, by the Trojans at this point getting on the boards and playing a real tough game. The uh, Tigers just can't seem to get together at this point. Nice drive, right coast to coast pretty much for number 20 there. That's Bailey. Goes up, gets a deuce, and draws a foul. See who they call it on. That's gonna be on number 14, if I'm not mistaken, and that is Chuck Lowe for the Tigers. And we have another timeout. We'll be back in about a minute on WPRG Sports, TV5, tel Telcom, Cable Network. Fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. Gymnasium, the Tigers and the Trojans tonight. 15 to, 15 to nine, the Trojans on top. And we're gonna go to the foul line. Bailey will be at the line. He's gonna shoot one. Uh, prior to the timeout, he had driven underneath and uh, laid up a nice little uh, easy two. And he was fouled in the process. And he's gonna go to the line, try to convert on the three-point play. And he does it. The Tigers bring it down court. Back out number 15, West. West over to Low. Low down inside, oh nice dish inside. But the shot was off. Gibson put up the shot. Trojans take it out of bounds, 11-16. Trojans still on top, possession of the ball. Uh, the ball was kicked underneath. That's going to be out of bounds on the Tigers. As Steve Johnson tried to dish inside and caught uh, Tiger foot, he'll bring it in from out of bounds. Goes underneath and away. Tigers with another possession of the ball trying to get back in this game. Not too far down, only five points down, 127 remaining in the first period of play. That's been one of the problems they've been having all night. Their pass is just not on target. A couple of high passes tonight. 
one of them result, resulted earlier in a turnover. That's number 14, Low. Low over to West, West back to Low. And you're gonna get an over the back call, I believe, on Shane McCoy as they try to go inside to number 23, Scarlett. And uh, Low, or I'm sorry, McCoy got him over the back. So the Tigers will take it right back out of bounds. McPeak, the trigger man. Nice little jump shot by number 23, Scarlett. And we got a 16-13 ball game. Less than a minute left in this period. That's six points for Scarlett. Surprise, sure, he hasn't been able to get too many to fall tonight. Almost saw a takeaway there. Inside, Harold Johnson count the two. He was fouled on the play. Let's see who they call it on. He'll go to the line, try to convert to three. They're going to call it on number 43. And that is Gibson, Brad Gibson. So we'll see one of the uh, best shooters, really, in the uh, 58th district go to the line right now in the form of Harold Johnson. How many has Harold got tonight? He's got nine points. Nine points tonight. He's going to try to make it 10. And Made he does. 10. 19-13, less than a minute left in this period. Tigers with possession. Big peak with the ball, puts up a deuce. No good, tap back in, let's see if they count it. No, they're gonna call a foul. They're gonna call a foul on Scarlett, I do believe. No, they're gonna call that on uh, McCoy for fouling Scarlett. And they are waving off the two. They don't count the two. I thought they should have counted that if they were going to call it on uh, McCoy. And the two should have counted. It was a nice tap. Very nice tap by Scarlett. That's three points on McCoy. Is number 34 in there for Miller, to new, I mean, uh, for uh, Mullins, a new man? I believe number 34 for Mullins is indeed a new man. And if I can find him on my roster here, that's Jason Baker. Uh, just jumping ahead, and while they're uh, talking about this here, Ted, talking about Millard. Of course, we're here at Mullins tonight, where it's Mullins and Wheelwright. But coming up, we do have a game at Millard High School here on Telecom TV 5 at WBRG Sports. This is going to be the first game that we uh, are going to be doing this year from the uh, Millard High School. And that's when the Shelby Valley Wildcats go up there to take on Millard. And that one's going to be coming up on February the 15th. We should have, uh, have that game on the TV at about uh, 10 o'clock on February the 15th. That should be a hot game. Shelby Valley, a tough team. And we're back to play in this particular contest. Mullins. Shot up at number 15, and he got it. Shane West with a deuce. And it's now 19-15. Trojans on top. Offensively, the Tigers just not having a very good night at this point. They've caused a few turnovers, but they just haven't been able to convert on a lot of the baskets they've been, or a lot of the balls they've been able to steal. Let's see if they do on this one as they take it away from uh, Johnson. Nice little double pump there by Scarlett. Let's we'll see what happened there. I believe we got another foul. Did you catch who they called that on? No, I did. I think they called it maybe on number four, and that would be Steve Shelton, if I'm not mistaken. That would be on Steve. I mean, is that on Steve? Two? One yes. or two? One. One. First foul on Steve. As we've got Scarlett at the line, he'll shoot two. And the first one's out of there. Won't fall. 19-15, three seconds left in the first period of play. He's got one more shot. And they'll have three seconds to get something off, whichever team happens to rebound the ball. It should be Will Wright. No. Got his own rebound. Nice play, let's tap back in, they count it. That's good. Oh, nice tap, that was by number 34. Jason Baker put the tip in at the buzzer, so we're now at 19-17. We'll be back in one minute with the second period of play on WPRG TV5. A satellite signal comes from outer space. The satellite office across the country and their call center? Hmm, we'd better not even go there. So if you wanna do business in your hometown with people you know and trust, call cable. Gearheart Broadband is locally owned and operated. Our number one concern is giving you, your neighbors and your community friendly local customer support. Get everything you want. Go local. Go Gearheart Broadband. Yeah. 
1917, and we're at the beginning of the second period of play. Here's the Mullins High School Gymnasium. Trojans on top. Possession arrow pointing in their direction, and they'll have the ball out of bounds. And the trigger man for the Trojans is going to be number 35, Steve Johnson. Inbounds it to Harold Johnson, the big gun for the Trojans. That's the man that the coach wanted to shut down. Johnson inside to Bailey. Bailey up. It won't count. He walked with the ball, and that'll turn over again. I think I'm counting about seven or eight turnovers right now from uh, Wilwright, if not more. So the Tigers take it out of bounds. Low. Over to Scarlett. I'm sorry, that's McPeak. McPeak. Inside. Low up with the deuce. No good. As to the call it out of bounds on. That's going to be Trojan ball. Nice, uh, nice attempt there by number 12. That's Sean Burnett trying to save the ball there. Just couldn't get a handle on it. Trojans taking in. Bailey with it. Token pressure in backcourt by the Tigers. Gets it across the timeline relatively easy. And he double dribbled. Last two turnovers caused by Bailey. You may see him come out of there. In fact, I think Monroe is going to his bench right now as we get number 23 in the game for the Trojans, and that is Paul Hall for Will Wright. Tigers have it out of bounds. Lowe brings it across the timeline over to number 12 into 22, McPeak. I got the low McPeak for a tray. Oh, no good. Back up. Nice little jump by Burnett. Picks up the deuce off the garbage. Shelton with the ball. Dishes off to Johnson. Up, and he got it. Count the basket, and he is drilled as he goes up for the shot. And that should be on, uh, who's I going to call that on? I'm going to call it on number 23, I think. That'll be Scarlett as we get a couple of substitutions in for the Tigers. Number 13, Bud Burnett, come into the game. And I believe that's number 41, Charles, Kevin Charles, into the game for the Tigers. And Harold gets his free throw. 22-19, less than seven minutes left in this particular period. Trojans on top, Tigers with the ball. Nice defense by Johnson there to knock the ball out of bounds. That was out of bounds uh, off the uh, hand of Charles from Will Wright. A lot of substitutions trying to catch up with him just quickly as Cam Burnett in the game. He's over to Burnett. To Burnett. There we go. Out of bounds, off balance, number 41. That's Kevin Charles. He just couldn't get his balance on that play. And another turnover for the Tigers. Burnett and Burnett and Burnett. That sounds like that, the Burnett trio. I think Maybe. it's a law firm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Johnny Burnett and the Rockabilly <laughs> Rebels, huh? There you go. And we got a traveling call. That's going to be against number 42 is in the game right now for the Trojans. And that's Michael Newsom. Actually, Newsom was starting earlier in the season for the Trojans. And... Uh, Lost his place in the starting lineup. He didn't start this game. Tigers get across the timeline. Burnett over to Scarlett. He traveled. That's going to be a walking call against Burnett. That is Sean Burnett. A couple Burnett's in the game. We got Bud Burnett and Sean Burnett into the game, respectively. Who was that Burnett that did that song called uh, Tired of Toe in the Line? Remember that song, Ted? Uh, do dog, but I tell you, I'm going to have to go back in the archives to find it there. Some Burnett, Johnny Burnett, some, but I don't know which one, but he got a big hit with that song. Tired of towing the line. It was a good song. I remember that song very well, but I just don't remember the artist, unfortunately. I'll, I'll bet you we'll get a call at the TV station. Somebody tell us who did it. I bet you're right. Tim from a three-point range there by Coy Scarlett. Couldn't make it fall. We got some action underneath. And that's going to be a foul against whom? We're across court, and it's very hard to see the referee motion uh, from this side of the court, so I'm not sure who that foul was against. But I believe they're going to call it on uh, 34, who just had a seat. If I'm not mistaken, 
Yeah, we're filming from the uh, wheelwright side of the gymnasium yes. here at the Bowman's High School. And, of course, uh, this is over here, the reason we're filming over here. Uh, I guess the main reason, this is where that uh, our uh, platform and our podium is to set the camera and for us to do it from. And On the far side, when we're filming, uh, the, those of you watching us home tonight, that'll be the Mullins uh, High School Tigers on the far side of the gym. And again, if uh, in case you're wondering, the uh, Trojans at this point moving to the right side of your screen and the Tigers moving to your left as you see Johnson putting up his first free throw and it's good, he'll get another. I get and a chance here, it. Ted. We'll, uh, we'll do a video shot of the uh, Mullins High School Pep Club on the far side. They got a big sign up there that says Mullins Pep Club and they got a lot of fans here on hand to watch the Mullins Tigers on Paris night. That was a beautiful little pump shot there by number 23. Coy Scarlett got the deuce on that one. Inside to Johnson, and he is fouled. They're going to call that, I believe, on 41. <laughs> Again, I can't see, Doc. I'm not sure who they call that on. But I believe Johnson's going to go back to the line. We'll say it was on number 41. Kevin Charles for the Tigers. Good video shot there of the Bullets Pep Club over there, too. And we need to tell them to wave there, Doc. Yeah. Oh, that's the first thing he's missed all night. I tell you, he's not going to miss too many of them. He has a big gun for Monroe Jones. How many points we got him for down? Uh, 14. 14 points, and we're not even uh, halfway through the first, second period of play. He got the second one. Tigers inbounded. They're hurrying down court. they got to play a little catch up here. While they're playing catch up, I just thought of the uh, Burnett that did that song. Who did it? On the line. Who did it, Doc? Rocky Burnett. Rocky Burnett. That's exactly Rocky right. Rocky Burnett. Tired of toe on the line. That's you the rockabilly <laughs> artist, Johnny Burnett of the Johnny Burnett Trio Sun. Yeah. That's right. And you win the Rice Roni of San Francisco. There you go. Treat. Hank Williams right. and Bo Cephas. <laughs> <laughs> Tigers get it out of bounds. Good okay. defense by the Trojans. What do you think about that video where Hank did that with his daddy? I think that was one of the classiest things I'd ever seen. Uh, great, that was a lot of creativity there. Yeah, the marvel of technology. I'm huh? telling Showing you. Showing what video can be utilized as. Bud Burnett walking with the ball there, turning it over as we see number 15 back in the game for the Tigers, and that's Shane West. Burnett will have a seat. So we only got one Burnett on the floor now. Should make it a little bit easier here. Nice little jump shot there. Lay it in. 29-21, Trojans on top. About four and a half remaining in this period of play, taking us up to halftime. At halftime, we should have an interview with Ed Taylor of the Floyd Kenny Times. Should be a lot of fun there. Nice tray. Three points put down by Jamie McPete. He shot a few of those tonight. Finally gets one to fall for him. And they're only down by five as they get the steal. Oh, double steal there pretty much. He lost the handle on it, number 41, Kevin Charles. Also coming up at halftime, Ted, we want to get Don Bowling, the assistant principal here at the Mullins High School, to tell us about that egg event they've got coming up at 1 o'clock tomorrow, Friday, here at the Mullins High School. I think it's going to be one of those gravity tests. That's going to be uh, the theory of gravitational pull, Doc. And we're going to see what happens. That should be a lot of fun. I'd like to invite, we're just going to invite everybody to come out and see that. It's not restricted in any shape, form, or fashion. And as I understand, it's going to be happening here at the high school. And it should be a lot of fun. I think uh, Don Bowling called it the egg drop. Yes, the egg drop. I, I think I'd have to tie a parachute to it, Don. I'm sure some of the Mullins High School students come up with some very innovative ideas here. We should uh, have a lot of fun at that tomorrow. Absolutely. Number 23 at the line, that is Paul Hall as he sinks his first of two free throws. 30-24, 4-18 remaining. He missed the second. Well, we got a lane violation, I do believe. No, pushing off. That's going to go against Scarlett, Coy Scarlett of the Tigers. 30-24, 418 remaining, and the Trojans will have the ball back with a chance to increase that lead even more. I think their biggest lead has been at eight points tonight. No, we had a foul. My fault, my bad. It was a foul, not a turnover. <laughs> Excuse me. As we see uh, Harold Johnson at the line, he's going to shoot a couple here. Got it. I'll give him another one. 31-24. Where's he at? Uh, 15, 16 points now? Yeah, he's got 16 points. And he hits 17. the second. 17 points. 
Good job of keeping those stats over there, Burnus. I'm telling you, Burnus, my right-hand man tonight, is keeping me in line. I get out of line, he reaches over and smacks me in the head. He's the man doing the numbers tonight. Nice trade shot there by number 22. As number 33 tried to go up for the shot, and that is Breck Hammonds. He was fouled in the act. He'll go to line, shoot a couple. Fouled in the act. That sounds sort of like a violation, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Penalty. Pay the price here. That's right. Throw that flag, ref. Give <laughs> the other man a freebie. <laughs> and he takes it. Throws up a brick. Offensively, the Tigers just not really on target tonight, Don. Yeah, they're behind here, 32 to 24. We've got about four minutes left here before halftime. They're certainly playing catch-up basketball going into the first half of this game. Absolutely. He missed the second free throw as uh, Harold Johnson clears the boards. Steve Johnson bringing it down, and he dishes off to Newsom. Newsom looking inside for Johnson, can't get it in. He's covered up by Tigers. Number 23, Paul Hall with the ball. Dishes inside. Newsom up for two, no good, and it's off there. We're going to get a shoving foul, I think. Probably called against uh, Will Wright. Yep, it's going to be against number four. Steve Shelton. Tigers have it out of bounds. Will Wright in a bonus situation. The Tigers uh, not really anywhere near it at this point. I think that might be uh, the fifth team foul on the Tigers. As we see another substitution, let's find out who came into the game, back into the game for the Trojans. Number 15, Jimmy Helton. Fine player in his own right. McPeak with the ball. Inside the two-point line, and he hits a deuce. 32-26, Trojans on top with the ball. Paul Hall brings it down for the Trojans. Drives down to the baseline, dishes it inside, tries to get it to Newsom, can't make it happen. And stolen away by number 33, and that is Hammonds. Long shot, no good by McPeak. Back up. Oh, won't get the, won't, can't get the shooters rolling. That that was number 43. Brad Gibson. Who was that foul on there, Brennis? Uh, number 42, Michael Newsom. It's going to be Michael. And that'll send number 43 to the line. Starting that queen chant up there, aren't they, Ted? Yes, they are. I we just, will, we will rock you. Well, they knew I, were com I was coming, <laughs> Doc, because that's my favorite group in the entire world. Oh, is that right? That is a fact. Freddie, Mercury, and Queen. I think they got a new album out, man. They've got a new album coming out this month, and it's called uh, Impressions, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I like that band, too. I've seen a lot of rock and roll bands, but I've never seen Freddie, Mercury, and Queen. But I'll tell you what, when they had that... Uh, we are the champions. We will rock you. Killer jams. Oh, absolutely. That was the news of the world, LP, there. And yep. if we get a foul on number 33 for the Tigers. Like that uh, LP, the game, that had that rockabilly number on there, too. Crazy yes. little thing called love. Yeah, queen. Break Hammonds gets the foul. Let's see who's going to send to the line automatically in the two points. Boy, they're fouling the wrong person tonight in the form of Harold Johnson. How many? What are we up to, 17 with him? No, he's got 20 points. 20 points. I fell behind there. <laughs> And that's just the first half, folks. We got 2.48 remaining in this half. He missed that one. He's only missed a couple from there tonight. Rebounded by Will Wright. And was Helton coming away with it. Johnson drives, dishes back out. Loose ball. Johnson gets it back. Nice little jump shot there by number 20, Lane Bailey for the deuce. 36, 27, 220 remaining in the half. Drives inside the paint. Tries to dish, can't do it, loose ball. That's gonna be walking. You hit the floor with the ball, you're automatically gonna be called for walking. That's just the way it is. And with the ball, that was 43. You'd think I'd have these names down by now. <laughs> Gibson, Brad Gibson as Will Wright brings it in. Newsom with the ball. Back over to Johnson. Johnson will bring across the timeline. Over to Helton. Newsom. Inside. That's Johnson up for the easy deuce. 38-27. Two, less than two minutes remaining. And we've got a uh, technical timeout here. So we're going to check things out. We'll be back in about a minute 
on WPRG Television 5. More than ever, we're all living online right now. It's one more reason using online account management from Gearheart Communications just makes sense. Visit ecare.gearheart.com to sign up so you can pay your bill, review your statements, or set up worry-free automatic payments, all without leaving your home. Make life a little easier. Online account management from Gearheart Broadband. Sign up today at ecare.gearheart.com. Play, and you saw that bro play broken up by number 20. Lane Bailey, good defense all night long by Monroe Jones Trojans. Doing a fine job. That's a tray, no good. Newsom brought it down, but flung the ball as he did and threw it away, and we're gonna get another foul on the inside, and that's probably gonna be against Newsom. Let's see, yes, that's gonna be on Michael Newsom. I believe it's Michael's second foul. Yes, second. And that uh, puts uh, Tigers in the bonus. As we've got going to the line, Kevin Charles, he'll have a couple. Up, first one is good. 28-38, 10 point lead by the Trojans. Make it nine as he hits a second. Backcourt pressure by the Tigers now as they tried to cut this lead down before halftime. They handle it well, get it up court. Bailey, up for the deuce. Lane Bailey. 40-29, Trojans on top, 120 remaining in the half. That's West. Charles inside to number 43, and he put up the deuce. And they throw the ball away. It'll go the other way, Tiger ball. Brad Gibson will be the trigger man for the Tigers. Shane West will bring it across the timeline. Less than a minute now remaining in the first half of play. Mullins and Will Wright. Will Wright leading the game. Dish inside. Oh, they're working the ball around so well along that baseline. Finally got the ball inside to number 33, but he couldn't convert on the two. And that foul is gonna go against number 42. They're signaling Mike Newsom, and that'll be his third. Right? Yes, thrill list. Quickly here before we get into the uh, halftime festivities, 44 seconds left here in the half at the Mullins High School. They're coming up tomorrow, Friday at 1 o'clock. It's going to be the egg drop here at the Mullins High School. And we'll be interviewing Don Bowling, the assistant principal of Mullins High School, coming up in her, in her halftime show. He's going to tell us all about it. It should be a lot of fun getting the uh, science uh, activities really involved here in Mullins. He hits the uh, free throw. That was 33 Hammonds, Breck Hammonds, as we saw in the pregame, Don. Uh, they were saluting the parents of the basketball team for their support. And of course, the uh, academic side of it, you've got the uh, egg drop coming up this weekend. As Johnson for an easy deuce off the dish by Johnson. So it's Johnson and Johnson on that play. 42-33, 25 seconds remaining in the half. So the homestanding Tigers in real danger of uh, being way down when they go inside the locker room here for the halftime. They come back out after halftime, Ted. They're certainly going to be playing catch-up ball here on I'm telling side. you. There's a tray try. It drops. Give three points to Shane West as the buzzer sounds. And we are at halftime. The Mullins High School Gymnasium, 42 to 36. Trojans on top. You're uh, watching uh, WPRG TV Sports Telecom Cable Channel 5. Ted Meadows with you on your play-by-play, -play, Berna Saul and Dr. Don. We'll be back in a couple of minutes on WPRG. With families spending more time at home together this year, it's a great time to level up your internet for the speed and Wi-Fi you need to power game consoles and computers at peak performance. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to upgrade. When you add up all the Wi-Fi connected devices in your home these days, you'll be surprised how many there are and how much bandwidth they're using. Do the math. It just may add up to needing faster internet and Wi-Fi. Good thing Gearheart Broadband has reliable download speeds up to one gig and Plume Adaptive Home Wi-Fi to keep all your devices well connected. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or visit Gearheart Broadband online for a great offer. We live in a modern, connected world. 
Your smart home security system should keep pace with your on-the-go life, giving you a view of your home and the ability to control what happens at your front door as if you were there. The best deterrent, peace of mind, at home or away. Protect what's important to you. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. We're back live at the Mullins High School Gymnasium. We're at halftime, 42-36. The Trojans on top of the uh, Tigers at this point. And our halftime guest, our first halftime guest, is Don Bailey. He was with us in the pregame. He's the assistant principal here at uh, Mullins. And you were talking to us about the egg drop this weekend. Yes, Ted, we've got a activity scheduled tomorrow with our junior high science and math department. The students have been working on a project where they're <clears throat> packaging a a raw egg and they're going to drop it off of a two-story building and try to preserve the intactness of it. They uh, are going to put it inside a cardboard box and uh, we've heard everything from jello to freezing the <laughs> egg to cellophane and see if they can drop it and package the best package and, and still have the egg come out uh, in one piece. Uh, kids have been working on it for several weeks. They're excited and we have uh, invited WPRG up and uh, some, some of the other news media newspaper and uh, of course all the public, parents and, and grandparents, everyone is invited to the event. It starts at one o'clock tomorrow and we have uh, physics and science teachers from the Pikeville College that have agreed to uh, be the judge of who has the best uh, package and uh, we, we're looking forward to it. And just <clears throat> as a point of reference, when you, when you say tomorrow that is Friday, uh, this game, right? Yes, sir. Okay. That's correct. This game is going to be tape delayed. It'll play back at uh, 10 o'clock this evening, which is uh, Thursday night, and again at 10 o'clock Friday night. So we don't want to mislead anybody right. uh, to come out Saturday, but this is going to happen Friday this afternoon be, at 1 o'clock. This will be Friday at 1 o'clock here between the gymnasium and the uh, high school building. Our junior high students will be on the gymnasium steps, and they'll be able to witness the egg drops, and then we'll bring all of the participants inside the gym and have the judging and award the prizes. Okay, let's move on to a slightly different topic at this point. Uh, the, the consolidation, Johns Creek, Mullins, and I believe it's gonna be called Pike County Central. Pike Central, yes, we're eagerly looking forward to that. The uh, board and the architect have indicated that next year will be the last school year that uh, Mullins and Johns Creek will be in existence as high schools and that the following year we'll be able to be together in, in the consolidated school at the top of Buckley Creek Hill. It's gonna be a beautiful building and we're we're excited about it. I'm looking forward to going up there, maybe doing some games at that, up there. We're glad to have you. Has, uh, have you uh, tossed around names of mascots up there uh, for the new high school? Each school, the student council from each school have uh, asked the uh, uh, students within the student body from each school to come up with some names. Uh, I think the uh, predominant thing that we're hearing now from both student councils is the colors. Uh, uh, the kids have indicated uh, uh, silver and, and uh, black will be the school colors, and I think the definitive mascot at this time has been the Raiders. Uh, nothing definite on it, but these are the these are the two things that are being kicked around. Okay, Don, thanks for stopping by and telling us about the Pike County. Uh, uh, Pike County, new Pike County High School and who will possibly be the Raiders. Uh, look forward to it and we look forward to the egg drop again. That's gonna be Friday afternoon, one o'clock and it's gonna be here at the Mullins High School. Should be a lot of fun. That's correct, thank you very much. Thank you, Don. We'll be back in just a moment with our halftime stats here on WPRG TV5 Telecom Cable Network. Okay, all right. Welcome back to the Mullins High School Gymnasium. We're at halftime of our game tonight between the Mullins Tigers and the Wilride Trojans. We're right on top right now, 42 to 36. And we have uh, Bernice Hall here right now. He's my uh, right-hand man tonight, keeping the stats for me. Bernice, run down the stats, and let's see how it got that way in the first half. Okay, for the Mullins Tigers, we got Jason Baker with two points, Sean Burnett with two points, Kevin Charles with two points, Chuck Lowe with three points, Jamie McPeak with five points, Coy Scarlett with eight points, Brad Gibson, five points, Shane West, seven points. For the Wheelwright Trojans, we got Shane McCoy with two points, Stephen Johnson with four points, 
And Harold Johnson with 22 points. 22 big points. He has really lit it up tonight for the Trojans as he always does. And Paul Hall with one point. Lane Bailey, seven points. Steven Shelton, six points. And who do we have anybody in some major foul trouble? Who's got three fouls? Uh, Shane McCoy had three fouls the first quarter. He didn't play any at all the second quarter. And we got uh, Michael Newsom, number 42, the big man with three uh, fouls. Okay, how are we doing on the uh, Mullen side, foul-wise here? Anybody with three? We got uh, Brad, uh, Brad Gibson. We got Brad Gibson with three fouls. That's, yeah. That's really the only serious foul trouble for the Tigers. So we're going to be back in just a second with the second half of action here on WPRG TV5 Telecom Cable Network. A satellite signal comes from outer space. The satellite office across the country and their call center? Hmm, we'd better not even go there. So if you want to do business in your hometown with people you know and trust, call cable. Gearheart Broadband is locally owned and operated. Our number one concern is giving you, your neighbors, and your community friendly local customer support. Get everything you want. Go local. Go Gearheart Broadband. RG5 Telecom Cable Network. Trojans and the Tigers. Trojans on top, 42-36, and the Tigers with possession of the ball. A little slow on offense tonight, I find the Tigers. I've been joined by Ed Taylor, by the way, the Floyd County Times. Ed, what are your thoughts on the first half of play well, as we'll, the Tigers work it around here? Well, we'll right. Uh, they look good in spots, but they didn't look anything like they did Tuesday night against Allen Central. As we see the deuce up there by number 23, Corey, Corey Scarlett. What was the final score in that uh, game over there with Allen Central, uh, Ed? You remember what the final score in that game yeah, was? Yeah, the final score was 81-69. Impressive. Very yeah. impressive. Howard, Howard Johnson, Harold Johnson had 35 points, and he looked awesome. He's looking not too bad tonight. Yeah. I believe our halftime stat was I think he had 22 already. Yeah, he's a, he's a tremendous basketball player. And you're going to get a foul on Newsom there as he goes over the back of uh, number 23, Scarlett. I believe Harold Harold Johnson is probably one of the most underrated basketball players in the 50th region. I'll agree with that 100%. I've seen him play. Uh, this is my sec second time, actually, I've seen him play, and I was just so impressed with his performance against Betsy Lane when they took on Betsy Lane at home yeah. and uh, actually just barely lost by a couple points that night. Newsom with the uh, rejection and the steal hands over to Johnson. He'll bring it across the timeline. Goes down, sets up the offense for the Trojans. Been doing quite well on offense tonight. Been running some plays and actually getting them in. But the Tigers defense has caused a few turnovers tonight. We see Newsom put up a deuce off the backboard. Nice little kisser. He's got three fouls. He's going to be careful. Wheelwright is Wheelwright is now looking inside the score instead of trying to go corners all the time. And that was uh, Coy Scarlett getting another deuce and it's stolen away and put back up. Number 14, Chuck Lowe with another deuce. We got a two point ball game all of a sudden, 44-42. Trojans on top just by a deuce. Hilton bringing it across the timeline, a little token pressure in backcourt, drives into the paint, puts it up. And he's fouled. I believe the foul is going to be on number 22. Yeah. Mullins is uh, another team that got off to a slow start, but they have uh, they played real good in the PIT, and they've been, they've have really steadily improved as a ball club. I was speaking with the coach earlier, uh, Joe Morrison, before the game actually, and uh, he, they're a young team. He was telling me that they were young and inexperienced, and the record reflects that: two and 14. Uh, Will Wright only seven and 12. But as we've seen uh, all season long, the record does not mean that you're going to be a, an easy team to beat. Uh, you're right. Uh, when it comes to tournament time, records mean nothing. That's exactly and, right. And, uh, you know, a team can start out so slow like these two teams have and then steadily improve and become a, a force to reckon with at the tournament time. That's exactly right. And you get uh, Helton there hitting both free throws for the Trojans, putting them back up by four. 46-42, six minutes remaining in this period of play. Dish is inside, number 22, and he gets the basket. That was McPeak, and let's see who the foul's going to be on. McPeak's a fine ball player. He's uh, he, he really, he's not very big. No, not he at really, all. He plays bigger than what he is, and he, he can really just get inside and just muscles his way in. He can body up with the best. He isn't built, uh, he's not a small fella. Uh, he's just not as big as some that we've seen. Yeah. And he converts on the three-point play. Trojans will take the ball out of bounds. 46-45, it's a one-point ball game. 
New player into the lineup for the Trojans. That's number 21, John Hall. Now John played for Osborne Eagles last year and uh, kind of led him to an undefeated season as an eighth grader. Be looking for good things from him as yeah. the years go by. He's just a freshman. He'll be a good ball player. Johnson drives to the paint. And he missed it. That's one of his few misses tonight. Mm -hmm. Generally hitting everything he throws up. Off balance shot, no good. Johnson down with the rebound. Turnover as Helton kicks the ball. The other end of the court. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice shot. That's their first lead tonight. It's impressive. 47-46, and they have come back. Don and I were talking at the end of the first period, or actually the first half, that they were going to have to play catch-up ball, and they've done that rather well. Yeah. As the lay, uh, lead changes again with a deuce from Helton. 48-47, Trojans on top once again. We're about to see McCoy and Bailey back in the game for the Trojans just as soon as they get a chance. Three-pointer, no good. There's something that we really don't really see in a lot of box scores in the papers and stuff like that or here on TV or radio a lot is the rebound of somebody like Harold Johnson. Now, we see him get 35 points Tuesday night, but we don't, but it's never hardly told that he got also got 15 or 16 rebounds. That's right. And he really is a really workhorse on the boards. Absolutely. Physically strong. He can shoot the ball. He's tough on the boards. Fine all-around player for the Real Ride Trojans. Yeah. And quite possibly the saving grace of that team this year. Right. As we see number four kick the ball, Shelton, he uh, was fouled in the process of trying to bring it down court. The press it seems to, to uh, have bothered Will right here in the second half. Absolutely, I think it's caused some turnovers. It caused a few turnovers in the first half, but uh, the Tigers were just unable to convert on them. And thus, Will Wright was able to take those big leads. Certainly give us a more exciting basketball game here in the second half. Absolutely. It is, yeah. More up-tempo. That's Bailey. Well, we Tiger should have McCoy. a good one down there at uh, Betsy Lane tomorrow night. This one, the Bobcats take on the Allen Central Rebels, and we'll have that one for the folks live on 5 at 8 o'clock Friday night. Absolutely. Junior Newsom and Johnny Martin, two of the premier coaches in the regional basketball, actually. I don't know. As well as the district. I don't know if you're aware of this, that Coach Martin will not be able to participate because of his ejection at Wheelwright. He has to serve a one game suspension. I was not aware that he was ejected. Yes, he was ejected. A uh, very, very odd situation happened there, Ted. Uh, the first technical foul was called on the Allen Central bench on one of the players. What happened was one player stepped on his toes and taking the ball out of bounds, and he pulled his foot back to drag it out from underneath the wheel right player's foot, and the referee looked about that time and thought he thought was trying he was to trip. Him. Yeah, <laughs> thought he was trying to and called a technical. And, of course, the technical was charged to the coach. Oh, my. Oh, three-point shot down and dirty, McPeak. And on the other end of the court, that was Bailey hitting one or two free throws as the Trojans have the ball back. 50-49, Tigers again with the lead. And another turnover. No, yes, it is a turnover. He walked. I thought he might have stepped on the out-of-bounds line there, but that was not the case. We saw, uh, you were just talking about an ejection by John, from Johnny Martin there. Uh, it also happened this year to Gordon Perido at Prestonsburg. Yeah. And uh, Peberg actually came out that night and played the best game I'd seen him play all year. Well, this Miss McPeak oh. is lighting it up. He is lighting it up from three-point land. That's his second one in a row. And they are fired up here at Mullins. 49-53. Mullins on top. We'll be back in about a minute. When you add up all the Wi-Fi connected devices in your home these days, you'll be surprised how many there are and how much bandwidth they're using. Do the math. It just may add up to needing faster internet and Wi-Fi. Good thing Gearheart Broadband has reliable download speeds up to one gig and Plume Adaptive Home Wi-Fi to keep all your devices well connected. If you're ready for an upgrade, call or visit Gearheart Broadband online for a great offer. WPRG TV 5 out of Harold, Kentucky. That's the Telecom Cable Network. And you've got sports action tonight from Mullins High School. The Mullins Tigers coming alive in the second half and have taken the lead over the Wheelwright Trojans, 53-49, off a couple of three uh, free <laughs> key 
three-pointers. There we go. And as I spit it out eventually here from uh, McPeak. And well, he has lit it up, Jamie McPeak. He's got him right back in the game with it. Uh, there's an almost uh, almost another turnover there. This pressure defense is really bothering Will Wright. But against, against Allen Central Tuesday night, they handled it the best I ever seen them handle it. And why it's bothering them tonight, I don't know. A little nervous, you never know. You come off a big win, win like that, you may be uh, over, that should have been an over and back. Another turnover. And you're right, it causes trouble once again. But that, that was really a, a bad, bad uh, call, or not call actually, but bad play by uh, Bailey. He knew better than that. Yeah. Uh, just just uh, wasn't thinking. A lot of mental, lot, a lot of turnovers are caused because of mental mistakes. I mean, you just, they just don't stop to think. Uh, well, first of all, they allow themselves to get trapped, and they should never do that. That's right. And keep the ball moving. Nice block and good, steal. Good play by McCoy. As Bailey brings it across the line, drives in, a little 10 footer. No good. Back up, McCoy. Oh, McCoy. And he got the deuce. McCoy had a tremendous game against Allen Central. He had 21 points, I think about 16 rebounds. That's not, That's impressive. 53-51, Tigers still on top. As McPeak drives and he gets hammered. To get back to the suspension of Johnny Martin, I, I called, talked to Coach Martin today and he said that this is the first time in his coaching career he'd ever been suspended for a game that's really bothered him. And, it bothers him, <laughs> and it bothers him more knowing he's not gonna get a coach tomorrow night. He said he don't know how to act and he, so he told me he's gonna call Coach Power to see how he's supposed to act. <laughs> <laughs> Missed three-pointer there. Back up. He got the deuce. So a nice off-balance shot by number 33. Let's get a name attached to that. Breck Hammond. Scarlet. Coy Scarlet, wasn't it? Was it Coy? Yeah, Coy Scarlet, yeah. 33 or 23? Yeah. 23. 23 got the That pass. is uh, Scarlet. You're right. I thought 33. I'm sorry. McPeak. Oh, downtown. 58-51. And the Tigers are alive, ladies and gentlemen. And another steal. Just turnover after turnover. There's another turnover. Yes. They're going to give it back. The referee got in the way of that ball as they were trying to get it. And Monroe Jones, he's going to question that play. I believe I would, too. I don't know if that was a proper call or not. I'm not sure. Uh, the referee gets in the way. It just uh, seems like, uh, theoretically, it's always just been kind of like tough luck. Whatever happens, happens. I think they're giving it to Will right now. That's the proper they, call. They right changed there. the call, and they are going to give it to Will right. And now... <laughs> He got Marson on the other bench upset, Coach yeah. Marson. <laughs> when you come out here to referee, you automatically got half the people against you. It doesn't make any difference what you call. That's right. You did a lot of that for a while there. Oh, yeah. I, I was in it for several years. Oh, he palmed the ball. Let's see what they're going to call it, though. They're going to call it a foul or what? Call it on number 33. Yeah, for, it's, get, it's going against, uh, going against Mullins. That? Number 33. We had him here him over there. There's Hammonds. Breck Hammonds draws the foul. Will Rod take it out of bounds. 58-51. This is really an impressive comeback by the Tigers. Defense has really come alive. There's a good example of it. Another turnover. That'll be a two-pointer. Two. Yeah. No, no good. Harold, Harold Johnson is completely out of the game right now. He's going to move there. A good move. Oh, there's a deuce by the big man. Just mentioned and it. Draws right. the foul. Yeah. That was a football pass from the other end of the floor by McCoy to create that play. It was more or less a run out. Uh, Johnson all in backcourt by himself until uh, I believe it was uh, 33 got back there to take him over and drew and he got the foul. So Harold will be at the line. He'll try to convert a three point play. 53 to 58 and I believe that's the first time that Will Wright scored in about the past four minutes. Yes. It's been, it's been about two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes. minutes. Yeah. Well, I gave him a little bit seemed, too much. Seemed it like seemed it might like have it. been four minutes. <laughs> I'm sure that's the way Monroe feels right yeah. now. We would like to remind all the sports fans that we will be uh, cable casting uh, the uh, game between Betsy Lane and Allen Central Friday night. The game will be at 8 o'clock, and they can catch it live here on Telecom Cable Channel 5. And that's what Johnny Martin's going to be watching it on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice drive. Scarlett's a tremendous basketball player. I'm telling you, went right to the paint and kissed it off the glass for the deuce and breaks up that drive. Yeah, there's another one, another turnover. Who are they going to give it to? They're going to give it. They were going to go to, no, I guess they're going to go to the Trojans there. They're going to call it kicking, I believe. They kicked the ball, so they'll give it back to the, to the Wheelwright Trojans.
Good shot. Johnson, nice Johnson, little, tremendous. Nice little jumper. They may get back into it if he comes alive. 56, 60, Tigers still on top. Well, they're gonna have to go to him. And that's a turnover by the Tigers. Let's see if they do. They have been the past couple plays here, Ed. Last two times on the court, they've gone to him. And that's a man, if you're gonna go to anybody on that Will Wright team for some deuces and some trays, or anything for that matter in the yeah. offensive line. He can do it all. He, he's, he, he's got good court sense. He, he, can, uh, he can shoot from anywhere. There good move right there. Oh, he's right good. to the inside, nice turnaround jumper. You know, a lot, of, a lot of players can't move unless they got the basketball. But a good basketball player will move without the basketball That's right, to get, get himself in free and, and in the position to score. Har Harold Johnson is one of those players. Absolutely. You just can't say enough good things about that man. He, no. is, he is a tremendous ball player. Fine athlete. Dr. Don was bringing out the uh, games coming up this week at Allen Central Betsy Lane. It's going to be live, uh, aired live on Channel 5. I think that's going to be one good night of basketball. Absolutely. Not only at Betsy Lane, but down at the Pressburg way, too, with McDowell and Prestonburg McDowell playing Press each other. I'll tell you, Prestonburg is playing some tremendous basketball right now. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, at the uh, change of periods here, Ed, I'm going to have you run down our conference standing for us in the uh, 58th District. All right, we'll sure do it. We see Bailey bringing it across the timeline. Dishes under McCoy, and he got the deuce. And it's 60 61. Tigers on top. We've seen that lead go down quickly. We sure have. McPeak. No right there's a reason, too. If you remember when McCoy was out of the game, uh, Mullins pretty well controlled the boards That's and was right. getting her shot. Now that he's back in, he, he's given that extra added rebounding strength that they need. That's right. He's now making see, it happen good, for him. There's good court sense right there. That shows good court sense right there. He see, just had about a second to get rid of that ball, too. Yeah. He doesn't allow himself to be trapped. They're going to run some time off the clock, and I can't say I blame them. You no. want to go into the fourth quarter leading. Right. And that's what they're going to try to do here. That's Johnson. Over to Johnson. Harold drives. And he puts it up. There it is. Nice little jumper, 62-61. About 15 seconds remaining in this period of play. And they'll go for the last shot, no doubt, as they give it to McPeak. He's been the hot hand here in the third period of play. He goes for the deuce. Up, and it's Got good. 63-62. Last shot. Bailey. Oh, no good. Almost. Bounces off the rim. And I'll tell you, instead of, uh, well, let's, I'll tell you what, let's take about a one minute break here and we'll be back and let Ed run down our conference standings in the 58th district. WPRG TV 5, Mullins High School tonight, 63-62. Tigers on top of the Trojans. And let's run down our conference standings. Uh, Ed Taylor with me in the Floyd County Times. And uh, Ed, you've got it all in your head there, so let's let's hear it. How's it stand in the 58th district? Well, in the in the boys' division, Betsy Lane has a five and one record and leads it by a half a game over McDowell at four and one. Prestonburg comes in at third at two and three. Allen Central has a two and five record. And of course, uh, Will Wright, which won our first conference game uh, Tuesday night against Allen Central, is one and four. The girls in the girls' division, Allen Central Lady Rebels has got it all wrapped up. They clinched the tie. They're six and one. There is still that possibility of a tie, but they just have to win one more game. McDowell is three and two, Betsy Lane three and three, Prestonburg at two and three, and of course, Will Ride 0 and five. All right, thank you very much, Ed. As we get back to action here at the Mullins High School Gymnasium, Will Ride Trojans with the ball, Johnson with it. And they're gonna try to run a little offense here. They uh, having a tough time in the third period. As we see Johnson drive, he puts it up. They're not gonna count it. He was fouled before the shot. What are they gonna call it on? Can't see that far, Ed. You're gonna have to help me. That's on 14. <laughs> Chuck Lowe. Steven Johnson, who just made the just made the drive and the and the basket. No doubt they gave him the basket. Did they count the basket? No, they did not. They okay, say it was boy. fouled before the all shot. All right, I was gonna say it. Is, uh, but Steven Johnson, who's at the line now, this is something he did all night against Allen Central. But instead of taking the shot, he would dish it back out to either McCoy or Johnson and they would score. For the three or the deuce. Yeah. Easy, easy play there. It's uh, you drive inside, your good point man's gonna do that. He'll drive inside, bring the defense with him, and that's gonna leave just about every man wide open for three and two point land outside. As he hits one of two from the line. Tied game. 63 all, 740 remaining in the game. And you see the Tigers uh, lose it. 
That was made possible by Steve Johnson. Nice defensive play there. He'll bring it out of bounds. He'll be the trigger man. Getting it in to number four, Shelton, Steve Shelton. You know, Ted, to be a basketball coach in Floyd County has to be a tough <laughs> job. I mean, pressure, there's pressure to win. And uh, boy. Oh, just out of there by Bailey, rebounded by the Tigers, McPeak. Go ahead, Ed. And, and, I, and I talk to these coaches, some of them every day, you know, and we talk and uh, we say things on the record and off the record. And, and uh, I talk to their wives. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can really hear some funny stories talking to their wives, but uh, it makes it easier for them to go home and it makes it easier oh. for the wife when they go home if they win. That was a nice rejection there by number 23, Scarlett. And another turnover. We got a little racehorse basketball now. What they need to do is slow it down. Slow it down, take it easy. You gotta yeah. look for the good shot. You're all tied up. 63 all, either team, it's a, it's a game. Either team can walk away with this W. What happens in higher high school seems like they, 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 they quit trying to run their offense. And, and and talking, you know, a lot of coaches said, hey, the problem with our team, and Coach Monroe Jones told me told me Tuesday night, he said the reason with the problem with this our this variety team is they won't run the offense. They won't run the offense. And so he said hey, he had to go and put a couple of them on the bench. And because uh, he said it's gonna be done his way or, you know, if they're gonna lose his way lose or the it. highway. That's it. And it, it really made an improvement, and they look good here tonight. Oh, Absolutely. They, you know, they've had a rough spot there in the third quarter. And we see Shelton hit his first. But you're right, it is tough. I mean, that's Kentucky basketball, though, for oh. you. <laughs> you got to know. But uh, it is a, it's tough in the uh, in the uh, Floyd County Conference. It's, it's amazingly tough. And you can never count any team down there out come tournament time. That's right. I was saying a while ago, you know, you got Prestonsburg. I think their record, what's their record right their now? Their record right now is 4-13, but they're well, the best 4-13 yeah. basketball team around. You're ever going to put your eyes on, and they're playing tomorrow night if you don't happen to catch that uh, Betsy Lane um, Allen Central game. If you're in Prestonsburg, come out and check out the uh, Prestonsburg McDowell game. And you're you're right, it's going to be the best 4-13 team you ever see in right. your life. Bailey. Good. Easy jumper. He was wide open pretty much. Stop jump shot, but he missed it. And we got a foul. Now here's the case of Harold Harold Johnson. And you know, I don't want to just sound like he's only went on the floor and he's not. And it's always a team effort, but but when this guy this guy stands out so much because he does things right. That's right. And when you do things right on the basketball floor, you're going to stand out. And uh, here he is, he, he didn't quit on that rebound. He was outnumbered under the basket, but he didn't quit. And he got the ball and he got fouled. Very physical player. Yes. Oh, misses the front end of the first uh, of the two. He's, I think he's only missed three from the line tonight. Well, Make it four. Good, didn't we? <laughs> Sorry, Harold. <laughs> I apologize, buddy. But you know, let's talk about this Mullins team a little bit. And, uh, and uh, Coach Morrison, you know, he, he got off to a real horrible start also. And of course, don't have that best of a better record. You right. know, they, they only got beat by Pipe with seven points. They, they, uh, they gave Pyble a real run for the money. That's right, that Pyble is a very tough team. They're doing very well, uh, this being Thursday, they're doing very well down in the Class A tournament. Uh, they beat a very tough team last night. I can't remember who they played last Beth night. Haven. Beth Haven. Beth Haven, and yeah. they came away with a victory, and they move on up, and we're at uh, timeout. So we'll take a break. We'll be back in about a minute on WPRG TV5 Sports Network. We live in a modern, connected world. Your smart home security system should keep pace with your on-the-go life, giving you a view of your home and the ability to control what happens at your front door as if you were there. The best deterrent, peace of mind, at home or away. Protect what's important to you. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. With families spending more time at home together this year, it's a great time to level up your internet for the speed and Wi-Fi you need to power game consoles and computers at peak performance. Call or click Gearheart Broadband to upgrade. 54, Tigers on top. Ed, what do you think uh, is going to have to be done by the Trojans here? Well, we're right. We're right just playing the kind of ball Mullins wants to play. They're going to have to hold the ball down. And they're going to have to go to their big men underneath, McCoy and Johnson. And uh, that, that, that's where they get their points at. And that's where most of their points have come from tonight. And they're going to have to go there. Yeah, you were talking about Mr. Jones, uh, Coach Jones, saying that the team just wouldn't run the offense. Uh, 
Is there dissension among the team? Do you uh, have any ideas or a little dissension maybe? Well, th that's, I believe that earlier perhaps there was some jealousy uh, among the players, but I think that's one thing that he has solved, that uh, he, he's decided that he's gonna have to clean his program up up there, uh, and the fact that uh, it's gonna have to be done his way and not let the players play it their way. Right, and uh, he has done a fine job. Again, the uh, win over Allen Central the other night, very impressive and uh, doing very well, very well here tonight. They led uh, pretty much uh, through the entire game until this point, they're down by one. Well, As we see a miss by McPeak. And McPeak likes that three point shot, don't he? He does. If you're open for him, why not take him? You gotta hit him eventually. Oh, There's good Johnson. Move. Nice little inside jumper off the glass. Well, that's what they've gotta do. Oh, McPeak tripped. He says he was tripped by someone, but I didn't see that. Bailey, now that's what Bailey does best. Bring it down, put up the deuce. Yeah, he, he, can re, he does that the best. 68-65, Trojans back on top. Less than five minutes remaining in the game. We got a foul, that's gonna be on Shelton. Now on, on that play right there, somebody lost their defensive assignment. Right. Where McCoy should have came out and cut that player off. And then of course, because underneath the basket there was no Mullins player. That may be what uh, Monroe's talking to talking to Johnson yeah. about over there as the Tigers bring it in from out of bounds. It's all mental. Now there's a tremendous oh, beautiful call. little play there. Yeah. Scarlett. He's, he's a dandy. There's Johnson. He drives up for the deuce. He misses. Nice strong rebound by number 15, Shane West. Scarlett. McPeak. Oh, I'm sorry, McPeak, you're yeah. right. Shelton comes out with the rebound. A little man among the timbers yeah. there. The smallest man on the floor. Bailey. Oh, that three. was a, They're gonna call it three. I thought yeah. he was on the line, but Look give him a tray. 71-67, McDowell, or I'm sorry, Will right on top of the Mullins Tigers. Do you, are you aware of the fact that uh, Will Wright is one of the only one of the two teams that's beat Jenkins in the 14th region. That's amazing. Yeah, and Jenkins is one of the top teams around, you know. Simply. Uh, I talked to Coach Jones, he says, he said, here we are, we got this record here, we won the only one of the two teams that ever beat Jenkins. It's <laughs> <laughs> impressive. By the way, we do have the Jenkins High School uh, Cavaliers on uh, TV5 basketball. They're gonna be coming up and we're gonna be up at Shelby Valley High School when the Shelby Valley Wildcats play Jenkins. I think that game's gonna come up in about two weeks so the folks will get a chance to see Jenkins against Shelby Valley on Telecom TV5 Sports. That's yeah. right, another game, I'm sorry, go ahead, Ed. Well, Steve Shelton just picked up his fifth personal foul. He's gonna He'll have a seat. We retired to the to the pines, I like to call it. Uh, Let's check with Burnus. Burnus, what did he score tonight going out of the game? What does he leave the game with according to our stat? Seven, seven, seven points? Seven points. Well, Steve was in there mostly just for the playmaking role of it. Right. Uh, he's, he doesn't he's good really at that. Look, he doesn't really look to score, but he can score. It doesn't mean he can't, but he just doesn't look to score. Free throws. First one up and good. Hey, when, you get a, when you get a chance there, give us a rundown of some of the games we've got coming up on Channel 5. Okay. Talking about, you know, we're going to do the Shelby Valley Jenkins game. Right. And tell us some of the other stuff we've got coming up. Some of the other stuff we've got coming up. Again, you mentioned uh, tomorrow night, Friday night, Allen Central and Betsy Lane, that game live with Joe Back and uh, Tommy Boyd tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, Friday night at 8. Uh, Tuesday, February 12th, Betsy Lane at McDowell. That'll be played back at 11 p.m. on WPRG. And Friday, February 15th, Shelby Valley at Millard. And that should be a very fine game there. So uh, you want to catch PRG, WPRG TV 5 for all play, all this play-by-play -play action. Uh, a lot of good ball games coming up with Don and the gang. Um, with us tonight, uh, of course, you have uh, Bernice Hall during our stats and some color tonight. Dr. Don on camera. Uh, we'll say hi to Brian Campbell back in the studios on the studio end of things tonight. And Ed Taylor of the Floyd County Times sitting in on color in the second half here. Got a good crew tonight, dude. Yeah. Absolutely. Don, Don may mention of a game coming up Tuesday night, and I'll tell you, they, if they're going to go to that ball game, they better go early if they're going to get a work or set, <laughs> because the back down gymnasium will be packed to the rafters. That is exactly because right. Because that will be the game, I'm saying right now, that will determine who wins the Floyd County Conference. And it's going to be a barn burner, folks, and it's one you do not want to miss. What we're going to do is uh, 
quickly let me inject this, Ted. What go we're going to do is we're going to go over to McDowell. We're going to videotape that game. Just as soon as that game's over, we're going to rush that tape back to the TV studios at Harold. We'll put it on just as soon as we get back from McDowell. That's Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Boy, that's going to be a good one. That's when you're going to have to put a straight jacket on Joe back for. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Joe Larry. <laughs> that. The flash Three man. pointer. Good. Oh, In and out. Johnson on a big rebound for Johnson there. That was a big board right there. And another by McCoy. That's got it. Yeah. Picks up the garbage and puts it in. That is McCoy. Shane McCoy. <laughs> now they really want to tighten up here, right here. See the, should, and they did. The man should have never been allowed to make the turn. Paul Hall, uh, Lane Bailey should have came over and picked him up and never allowed him to make, make, make his right. Make him go to the left. The, the side that he can't go to. His weak side. His weak side, yeah. Because he had weak side help. But he didn't turn him there. And that, and that, see, these are just some of the mental things that these kids don't think about. That's right. That really gives these coaches fit. They practice, they, they, go, they go through it, and uh, they, just, uh, they just don't think. But again, you know, you got Monroe Jones and uh, Joe Morrison, both with very young teams. Oh. Um, the talent, you know, is going to have to develop and come of age, and they've uh, pretty much done that for the most part. But, uh, you know, they're going to make those kind of mistakes. They sure are, yeah. A uh, young person always going to make a mistake like that. As we see Scarlett put down a basket from the free throw line. Run out at the other end, and a turnover on the wheel right into things, and the Tigers will have it back. 75-72, 2.56 remaining in this ball game. Trojans on top, but these Tigers are feisty. They will fight back. They got the three-point shooting of McPeak, and that could be the difference in this game. Inside jumper, no good. And that was Scarlett. He just put it over McCoy. One point. 74. 75. Oh, I'm going to score. 75, 74. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get on, get on track here in a minute. Johnson over to Bailey. Down inside to McCoy. Turnover. No, they're going to call that out of bounds on the Tigers, so that uh, turn was almost a turnover. <laughs> and Scarlett got a hand on the ball. But you know, if you're uh, either coach here tonight, Ed, you really got to be kind of proud of your team. They both played yeah. some excellent ball here in the latter stages of this half. There's a tur big turnover there, big turnover. And, and there's another, another one. one. Even a bigger one right there. He didn't look around now, behind what they him. need to do is they need to run their offense. They need to think. Set Let it up. It. Yes. Take We're their time. To, see, there needs to be some help come up here, but there's no relief for the men. I don't mean try to coach here. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a foul underneath. And I believe that's going to be charged. 75 74. We got less than uh, two minutes to go in this game, and you can bet everybody on Hurricane Creek and everybody on Island Creek are rooting their Mullins Tigers on during this uh, Paris night here tonight. You can bet all the folks watching this on Tilcom TV5 over at Wheelwright, rooting these Wheelwright Trojans on. We, got a, right. we got a barn burner here. 75 74 with less than two minutes to go. Good and we've game. got a player down too, Don. Don, that is uh, McPeak. McPeak. Yeah. And that is a player they could uh, hardly afford to lose this point. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, maybe that bandaged knee gave out on him or something. I'm not sure what exactly happened there. We just had uh, Harmon here pick up his fifth personal foul. Breck Harmon just picked up his fifth personal foul. And then McPeak's hurt too. And boy, McPeak is what got him back in the game in the third quarter with his three-point right. shooting. He hit two key uh, three-pointers there in the uh, early goings mm -hmm. and really got him back into this thing. And they're behind right now by one, 75-74. But when you got two key players on the bench, as they do, and I don't believe we're going to see uh, McPeak back in this game. Boy, he looks like he's in a lot of pain over there. Let's take a time out right now while they're trying to decide who's going to come into the game here. We'll be back in about a minute on WPRG TV5. Gearheart Broadband knows the Internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey. One to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact Gearheart Broadband and connect to the internet speed that suits your journey. And enjoy the ride. In this game, I want to say hi to everybody up in Island Creek tonight. And where else, Don? Up in uh, all of Island Creek and all of Hurricane Creek. Uh, all of those folks, uh, of course, go to Bolas High School, uh, Ted. So they're undoubtedly watching the Bolas High School Tigers here on Paris night. We'll say hi to them. And they're going to be proud of their basketball team because uh, they are 
They are uh, a scrappy little bunch. That they play right. hard. And, and they're not out of it. No, they're not out of this game yet. Just a one, they're down by one, and Will Wright's going to a stall right now. That's this is, excuse me, Ted, I'm sorry. That's all right. This is something they're going to need to do. As you yeah. see, Johnson go up and put in the deuce, and he's fouled by Scarlett. But uh, they want to slow the ball down because they realize uh, that they, they can uh, lose this game very easily. That's right. One of the things Will Wright and uh, doesn't do well, and that's hold the basketball. They're not a very good team that can handle the, the stall very well, uh, even though they look good that time. <laughs> <laughs> they got it to Johnson. That was a nice drive by Johnson. Just went down on the paint, put it up, and drew the foul. And misses on the three-point conversion. Tigers rebound, bringing it down, 77-74. And we've got a timeout. Let's, uh, let's keep it here, Ted, okay? All right, let's do that. As I try to get my act together over here. i uh, just like to remind you, again, uh, tomorrow at 1 o'clock, Friday at 1 o'clock, here at the Mullins High School, they're going to be having the egg drop. It should be a lot of fun. Everyone is invited to attend that. Uh, also, some other games coming up on WPRG, as well as this one you're watching tonight. Uh, you can see it again Friday night, immediately following the Allen Central Betsy Lane game. That game is going to be carried live at 8 o'clock with Joe Back and Tommy Boyd. And right after that game, which should be proved to be a barn burner, um, you can see this game replayed on WPRG. And of course, as you were telling us earlier, Johnny Martin will not be at that game. <laughs> he, uh, he has to sit out because of a penalty. Tuesday, February 12th, Betsy Lane and McDowell. Uh, that'll be video playback at 11 p.m. immediately following that game uh, that night. And the 15th, Friday the 15th, will be Shelby Valley at Millard. And that game will be played back at, it says here, 10.30 the very same night. And I'm sure they'll play a couple more times after that as well, won't they, Don? Yeah, that's the policy at Telecom TV5 at WPRG, Ted, as we play each of our games twice. And that's, uh, after all, uh, reruns. That's the name of the game in TV. Yeah. So, uh, I, I just, I just want to say that I've heard a lot of, lot of people, I mean, I mean a lot of people, talk about games and, and how they enjoy watching them. A lot of them go back home after they go to the game live, go back, just so they can see the game on television. That's right, and then they'll video record and watch it time and right. time again. Yeah. So we see Scarlett put up a deuce for the Tigers. It's a one point ball game, 76-77. One ten remaining in this ball game, ladies and gentlemen. This is a big possession right here for Will Wright. That's right. They got to think this thing out. That's Johnson, no good. Was a, it wasn't a very good shot selection right there. Not at all. And the Tigers have a prayer here. They sure do. Do they hold it for one or do they go for the basket? Well, He's going to go for it. He puts it up and gets fouled. Well, that's the man they wanted to go to. That's their leading scorer right there. That's Scarlett. Uh, Scarlett and McPeak. Of course, McPeak's hurting on the bench or somewhere. I think they may have taken They're him. They're sitting on the end of the bench down here. I thought they took him to the dressing but, room. But right uh, he's out of here, so they were having to go to, to Scarlett. But Coy's a tremendous basketball player. Absolutely. As Scarlett's at the line, let's see if he can hit it. He'll get two. He misses the front end. That's not good. You got to hit the. You cannot win a ball game down the stretch if you don't hit the free throws, especially when you're this close. You got to hit the free throws. What do you think about the two shot foul this year? I'm not too sure. I like it to be honest with you. I know I don't. I, I'm just gonna go on record and say I just don't <laughs> like it. I, I like think it, it. I think it takes a lot of coaching strategy yes. away. Uh, it takes away the pressure of the game. That's uh, right. Uh, I, 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 of course. Oh, oh, good play. Nice Johnson. drive along the baseline by Johnson. And they're up 79-76. We've got a timeout. Let's, uh, let's keep it, Ted. We've we'll got keep 32 it seconds. Right here. here, Don. We can talk strategy, can't we? Sounds yeah. good. 32 seconds remaining, 76-79. Uh, <laughs> no. It's going to be interesting. They're gonna have, if they're going to hold it for one, they're going to have to go for the three. Yeah. And if you're the Tigers, who are you going to have taken? Well, you got your three-point shooters out. McCoy, Coy Scarlett would have to be the person you'd have to go to. Uh, or... What, you got 32 seconds. You, you, if you can do one or two things here, you can take the ball in early and hope to get foul and get a three-point the old-fashioned way, I like to call it. Right. Or you can hold it and go for the three-point for the tie, either one. If you go in early and you don't get foul, then you've got time to get the ball back or, or try to get the ball back and then go for your three-point shot. But you're going to, you, right now, I think it's a little too early to, to panic and take the three-pointer with this much time. And uh, so you... What needs to be done, what I think they should do is, is uh, work for the good shot, go inside, try to get the three-point play if they can uh, that way. If not, then kick it back out, and if time is down low, then go for the three-point. Sounds like a winner to me. Let's see what happens. 
32 seconds remaining, 79, 76. We got, uh, if you'll uh, notice there on the TV screen, setting yeah. up there on the, comfortably resting back against the wall up there, well, enjoying, and I think uh, that uh, his son plays for these Mullins High School Tigers here. I believe you're right. I think he's number 14, isn't he? Yes, uh, he is. That is Chuck Lowe. He's uh, gotten some good playing time tonight, a little PT. Let's see what the Tigers do. 30 seconds remaining. A big oh, turn over there. To go in the inside. Now you just put in your pocket and don't rush nothing. That's right, but they did try what you were talking about, Ed. They tried to go to the inside, right. and they just couldn't do it. Having trouble getting it across the timeline. Make them foul you. Don't. Bailey. Don't need no shot. See, you didn't need to go inside. Not at all. You it's had the basketball. Up, oh, no good, you got the foul. Six seconds remaining, 79-76. And we've got a Will Wright player going to the line and it was uh, kind of congested under there. So I'm not sure who's gonna be going in that direction. Uh, now, now what, what happened to McDowell when Will Wright had him down? Will Wright had a, had a three point lead, 21 seconds ago, and the ball. This boy at the line, Steven Johnson, I'm not faulting him, but he didn't think and he came up the floor quickly, took the ball to the middle and lost the ball on a turnover, you when all he had that. to do was to back it out, run the clock, but he had a three-point lead, That's right. had the ball. All he had to do was back it out and, and, and hold it, but instead he forced the ball in, lost it. McDowell come down, hits a three-point, ties up, sends it in overtime. Now, McDowell has got one of the tougher defenses in the 58th oh, yeah. district there. They're tough. Uh, you got Stacy Hall over there, and he is one of the finest ball players in the district. Uh, as we see, uh, we have a timeout here at this game. Six seconds remaining, 79-76. Who else do you like in our district down there? Well, <laughs> boy, I mean, not the single out players. I mean, you know, each team is unique in its own uh, way, and each player by that same token is as well. But if you uh, had to pick an all-tournament team, a starting five right now out of our district, come on, Ed, give it to me off the top of your head. My two top players is the two we talked about, Philip King, Harold Johnson, definitely on there. I'll go with that. Uh, then I have to go with Stacy Hall, I believe He's a, one of the best guards in the 53. I'll give you that. And then I'm I'm uh, I'm kind of partial to Chuck Lafferty down at Allen Central for the simple reason Chuck works hard. He's a team player. He's a team very he's a yes a very team oriented player. And then of course I like uh, I like the Clark boy also out of Prestonsburg. That's a good John Clark. Yeah, absolutely. I think I'd have as my sixth or seventh man off that same Prestonsburg team, Aaron Tucker. Oh, yeah. I've never seen a guy play with so much intensity in my life. Yeah. He's awesome. Six seconds remaining, 80-76. Johnson up with the second. He hits both. 81-76. It's uh, pretty much all over with. Not much they can do. If they don't foul, we get a three. He hit it. And the game is over. It's going to be 79-81. Will Wright wins it here at the Mullins High School. So they walk away with a W, and uh, Mullins will go to a two and 15 record, as Will Wright will go to an eight and 12 record on the season. And a fine game, really. Uh, both teams playing very well, playing very hard. And uh, we'll be back in about a minute with our stats on WPRG. Fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution, encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. More than ever, we're all living online right now. It's one more reason using online account management from Gearheart Communications just makes sense. Visit ecare.gearheart.com to sign up so you can pay your bill, review your statements, or set up worry-free automatic payments, all without leaving your home. Make life a little easier. Online account management from Gearheart Broadband. Sign up today at ecare.gearheart.com. Gymnasium where we've just seen an 81-79 victory by Wilwright over the Tigers, and it was a very impressive game, a uh, hard-fought game. We'll get the impressions of the coaches in just a moment. All right now, let's go to uh, Bernus for our stats, for the, fi the final stats of the game. Bernus? Okay, for Will Wright, we had Shane McCoy with eight points, Stephen Johnson with eight points, Harold jo Johnson with 37 points, Paul Hall with one point, 
Lane Bailey, 12 points. Michael Newsom, 2 points. Stephen Shelton, 7 points. And for the Mullins Tigers, we had Jason Baker with 2 points. Sean Burnett with 2 points. Kevin Charles, 2 points. Chuck Lowe, 6 points. Jamie McPeak, 22 points. Corey Scarlett, 25 points. Brett Hammond, 1 point. Brad Gibson with 5 points. Shane West with 13 points. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll have the uh, coaches post-game show uh, in just a second, so stick around, WPRG. WPRG TV Sports Telecom Cable Network Channel 5, and uh, we've just witnessed a good victory tonight. Uh, Coach that's Joe. an excellent victory on the road, of course. Uh, we played Tuesday in one, and we got a game on the road here in one, and we're going back home tomorrow to play Sheldon Clark. Uh, so that's a great victory. That's a good game. It's a barn burner. Every, it seems like every time we play Mullins, it's a great game. You seem to, teams seem to slack off maybe uh, in the third period of play. Uh, Ed and I were talking. What happened there? Uh, I thought it was kind of tired. Fatigue got to us a little bit. Uh, Mullins, was, I thought, quicker than we were. And I thought fatigue hit us there third quarter. And we went a little bit flat. We kind of picked it back up fourth quarter and kind of saved the victory. Ed? Oh, good. Uh, I also, going back to the third quarter, whenever you was – uh, experiencing the turnovers, the number of turnovers that you had there. Uh, I, I, I thought that uh, the, the pressure, not, it wasn't so much the pressure that Mullins was put in there, but it seemed like it was more mental mistakes than anything else. I think it was more the, the fact that our guys on the receiving end wasn't coming to the basketball. Uh, we didn't really make that many turnovers for us throwing it away. We had a lot of guys not coming to the basketball, and that always hurts you against a double-team trap. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. But uh, now, now you're, you, you've Got your two-game winning streak here, modest two-game winning streak. It's good, and and uh, you 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 won a big game Tuesday night against Allen Central. That had to do, build the confidence of your boys. They played good ball tonight. They struggled in the third quarter, and I realized that. But I believe that those boys, uh, they didn't have the intensity level that they had at Allen Central. But but coach, I believe that they're they're realizing they are a good ball team. Well, we've got the potential to be a good ball team. Of course, we played Betsy Lane and McDowell and all of them to one and two-point games, and and our kids uh, forgot about believing in ourselves because we went on about a five or seven game losing streak and now we're starting to pick it up a little bit and they're getting their confidence up and hopefully we can go into the tournament that way. Boy, you can't say enough for Harold Johnson. Well, Harold's played outstanding for us this year. Uh, like I say, the last 10 or 12 games, he's just come through with about 30, 32 points each and every game and uh, he's just hard to handle inside as strong as he is. Another fine player you got on the inside is McCoy. McCoy is a fine job. He's improved more than any kid we've got on the team. Of course, he's only played two years of basketball. And he's come out here this year as a senior and, and really dominated under the boards there. I, I believe I believe that I, I haven't seen two players, maybe outside of Gerhardt and King at Betts Lane, but two players in this county that complement each other better than McCoy and Johnson. Absolutely. Uh, they do. They look for each other. Uh, of course, they can't really. We don't have really the quickness to go out there and blow by anybody and score ourselves. So we're going to have to move the basketball. I thought our ball movement was very slow tonight. Uh, we should have looked up and got the ball up the floor more, quicker than what we did. Well, uh, now you got Sheldon Clark tomorrow night. Sheldon Clark's uh, they're a fine basketball team. They're a big team, and they've got a lot of weapons to use against us. And, uh, of course, we play them at home. We've got to get up, get our intensity level up the whole game, uh, and hopefully make it a good game tomorrow night. Uh, that, uh, McDowell and, and uh, the Cardinals had a barn bird, 102 to 93. Boy, yes. I mean, <laughs> uh, no defense in that ball game whatsoever. You but just <laughs> but, uh, but without the Pinson boy going to transfer to Paintsville now, and uh, I heard the comment – some of the guys on the sports show in the WSIP comment how it has affected the Cardinals basketball program. Well, anytime you leave, uh, leave a, a boy out there in the middle of the season and lose him, it's going to affect your basketball team. But I'm sure they got enough players to get the momentum back for them also. Uh, I, we look for a good game tomorrow night. Well, Coach, a great win tonight. Good luck tomorrow night, and thanks for stopping by and talking with us. Okay, That's the head coach it. of the Will Ride Trojans. A fine win here tonight, 81-79. Monroe Jones, thanks a lot. We'll be back uh, with the head coach of the uh, Mullins Tigers in just a moment. WPRG TV Sports Telecom Cable Network Channel 5. Ted Meadows back with you along with Ed Taylor of the Floyd County Times and the coach of the um, Mullins Tigers who uh, went down to defeat here tonight. It's, it's a rough loss, Coach, uh, Joe Marson. And um, what happened, uh, my, my first question is going to be, what happened to uh, one of your key players there at the Emmett Peak? What, what went wrong with the knee? Um, well, Jamie had an injury a couple games back, and he's uh, been a little bit slow recovering from it. Um, I don't, I hope, you know, I hope it's not very serious. It was, uh, I think it kind of twisted on him, and uh, I think he'll be all right. It's a pretty tough kid. 
He's a good ball player. We were talking at uh, the key to the comeback that you guys made in the third period due to a couple of three-point shots that he uh, laid down right back to back. Yeah, he, he's a good competitor. Well, you know, I think they're all good competitors where they fought back and got in the ball game. We can't uh, can't fault them. Uh, when they play hard, we just they're a young team. They'll make some mistakes, and uh, we just hope they just keep playing hard. You know, a game like this, two-point ball game, in which you get beat, it's uh, – kind of a young team uh, might break their back or it, and they can grow from it if they'll learn from their mistakes and just keep on, you know, playing hard. Right, Ed? Coach, you, you've, you've come in here now and, um, and we're almost at the end of the season. It's almost district tournament time now and you started your season and, you, and no doubt your team got off to a slow start, but I have seen a, a, a great improvement in this ball club. Yeah, I, well, I think, uh, yeah, we've improved as a team and uh, even had some, you know, some of the kids improve a lot individually, which most of the time doesn't happen within a season. I think, yes. you know, the summer's the time to improve individually, and some, some of the players have come along in their ball handling and uh, not making the mistakes they made early, and that's, that's helped us out. I really like this Coy Scarlett. Coy is a tremendous player, plays hard every night, a good competitor. He's done a, a fantastic job. If you could uh, take a look at his stats, they're almost identical every night. Mm -hmm. And for a player that with limited varsity experience to play that consistent is – I doubt if anybody has played as consistent as he's played throughout the course of this season. What is he averaging about off the Corey, he averaged about 17 points about a game. 17, 17 a game. Well, I tell you, you they're, they're a scrappy bunch. And Absolutely. You, you got down, and but you came back, and you took the lead. I think you went up about six, maybe seven. About six or you seven. You were down yeah. at six at yeah. halftime. You came back. You went up by seven. And, uh, of course, your, your press hurt wheel right off the bat. Uh, yeah, our pressure caused a lot of turnovers and uh, – if we could rotate it behind our traps and this and that and not give up some layups, which we haven't been using a whole lot. We've uh, really, this is the first game we've pressed for 32 minutes, and uh, I think it'll get better as we, we, we'll work on it throughout the course of this season. Was your game plan coming in here tonight to key on Johnson, the Harold Johnson? Uh, yeah, well, we, we are, our game plan was caused a lot of pressure and try to get into a full court game and not let him get us into that basket and just wear us out. He's a tremendous player. He tremendous sure is. physical player, and he shoots that ball well. Uh, you know, he's one of the better players we've played against this season. Uh, we, we've talked about ourselves here, probably one of the most under, oh, underrated uh, basketball player in the 53. I think so. Uh, I think he's so. a just, player. A, just a junior, isn't he? Yes, just a junior. Yeah. He's going to be awesome to see next year. In fact, this uh, Mustang team as well, a young team, uh, coming up, going to do very well in the next couple of years. Look forward to seeing them play. Uh, tough loss here tonight, 81-79, Coach. But, again, uh, both, squad, both squads playing a tremendous ball game, especially in the fourth and final quarter play. Uh, just some tough breaks. Do you feel like you might have been able to pull it off had you not lost uh, McPeak? Uh, we, you know, I, I hate to say that because it'd be like making an excuse. We try to, you know, try to teach the kids when, you know, somebody goes down, somebody's got to pick up the slack and this or that, and uh, we just hope they don't get down. We, you know, we talk to them a little bit about uh, mistakes at the end of the game, or you know, don't win or lose ball games are just magnified by the average fan, and that, uh, you know, first quarter mistakes are just as serious as fourth quarter mistakes, and. Uh, you know, we, we'd hate to say that because it sounded like we was making an excuse for ourselves. I think, you know, James played a fine game, and, you know, if he went down, somebody just needs to pick up the slack for him. And I think you got that help, especially in Scarlet. Yeah. He's a tremendous basketball player. Well, listen, we're, we're coming uh, – you, you, you played, what, 19 ball games now, and uh, and only really you, you play a regular season schedule to get ready for the big thing. That's the tournament. You're ready for the big what, How much does a record really mean going into a tournament? Um – I don't think a record means a whole lot in terms of, you know, you've seen some teams in the past here, I, and, uh, one I can think right off the bat is McGoffin County, that uh, at tournament time is playing real well, and I, I think they're playing well right now. Uh, you know, tournament law, especially for a young team like us, can kind of salvage your whole season. If you can get in there and play well and knock you know, in a game or two, and, you know, at tournament time, anything can happen. You know, we're not, we're not selling, calling this thing off. We're just kind of keep working and working. That's what we're working for now. I know over in our district, uh, which is not like it is where you're at here, but in our district we have the odd five teams, and the fifth place team ends up having to play the first place team. Right. But our county, we feel, our county is so so balanced over there that the fifth place team has just a good shot against the first place team as the first place does against them. Yes, and certainly. Over there, if you win one ball game as a fifth place club, you're automatically in the regional. Yeah. That's right. I can remember a couple years back, uh, I think Pressburg was seeded number one when they draw for it, and. Uh, Allen Central was seeded five, and it was right down to the wire, and some free throws missed by Allen Central, and fifth, fifth place knocks off the uh, eventual uh, right. state tournament team. That's right. That was in 89. That's when, right. When, uh, when Pressburg went. And I can remember that game very well. They missed, uh, I believe it was three or four straight 
first ends of the bowling. Yeah. I'm gonna get. I, I gotta ask you this, Coach. I you know, if, if we're this. playing, <laughs> I gotta ask you this. What do you think of the new two shot brow foul shot? Um. Okay, if you're playing with the two shot foul, I don't think she wins that game. I believe after right. you miss one, they'll sneak another one. Um, if the intention is to speed up the ball game, I don't think it's done that. Right. I don't think it's done that at all. If that's the, that's the intention, um, I, yeah, I, I don't have a good opinion on it. I don't think it's done what it was intended to do by speeding up the ball game. Do you think he'll be back next year? I doubt it. I don't think now, it will. I know the coaches have got to vote on it whether they want to want it come back. It's just an experimental stage now. And most of the coaches that I have talked to, every single one of them does not like it. They don't reserve judgment on it. They just come play, tell you, <laughs> don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Much like, like your opinion, Ed. <laughs> now, <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I think it uh, takes strategy from coaching off the bench, you know, and uh, I think it takes – I'm like the coach here. I, I don't think it has speed up anything. If it has done anything at all, it's taken pressure off the officials. Yes. And slowed the game down. And slowed the game down. slowed right. the game down. Well, Coach, thanks for stopping by this evening and talking okay, to us. Thank uh, you. We'll see you next time around. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. you. And we'll be back and close it out here on WPRG in just a second. <laughs> How about that? Dr. Don has some fans here tonight. Dr. Don Bevins, number one WPRG TV. A couple of uh, doctors fans over here, and uh, they're riding it up there. <laughs> Don, you got to take off your headset. I believe your head's swelling there. Look, just a little bit. <laughs> well, it's been a lot of fun here tonight, WPRG. And uh, first, I'd like to remind you as we close out tonight. I'd like to remind you that uh, tomorrow night, being Friday night, you can see live on WPRG the Allen Central Betsy Lane game. That game getting underway right around 8 o'clock. It's going to be live, and immediately following that one, you can see a replay of this game, Mullins and Wilwright, immediately following the Allen Central Betsy Lane game. On Tuesday, the February 12th, uh, it's going to be Betsy Lane and McDowell, and that should be a heck of a game at McDowell. Uh, if you're going to see that, uh, go see it live and then go home. Watch it on PRG on tape delay. That game will be on right around 11 o'clock. Now, Friday, February 15th, it'll be Shelby Valley at Millard, and that game also will be a tape delay playback at 1030, and all these games uh, will be uh, played back a couple times, according to the good doctor over here, my personal physician, and uh, so you can have a chance to catch them at least twice on WPRG each time that they do a game. Uh, I'd like to thank... First of all, Ed Taylor, who was with me during the second period of play for doing some color and stats for me. Bernice Hall, uh, another fine color and statistician. I appreciate his help tonight. Dr. Don, of course, on camera. And Brian Campbell back at the studios. Appreciate you, Brian, as well. I'm Ted Meadows for WPRG Sports. That's Telcom Cable, channel number five. Good night, everybody. <laughs>